Hey guys, how's it going? I'm the Royal Long. In this video, I will be presenting to you guys the second installment of my guide to the Berserker class, where I will be providing an extensive tutorial to the variety of weapons the Berserker carries within the Killing Floor 2 universe. Keep in mind that the game is still in its alpha stages and that there may be other weapons coming out into the game eventually. So when the time comes, an updated video will be posted again. So to start off, here is the current arsenal available to the Berserker class. The 9mm pistol, the lawn mower blade, the EMP grenade, the Krovo survival tool, the Vlad 1000 nail gun, the Zwei hander, the pulverizer, and lastly the eviscerator. So to start off, the Berserker's basic tools include the 9mm pistol, a lawn mower blade, two EMP grenades, and the Krovo survival tool. These are the tier 1 weapons which are available to anyone who starts off as the Berserker class within the game. First up is the 9mm pistol. The 9mm pistol is a weapon available to all classes and as a Berserker, shouldn't be relied on unless you intend to use it for farming XP. But since the Berserker is always so up close and personal with the Zeds, there shouldn't be any scenario where you take out your 9mm pistol. Moving on to Berserker proper, we have the Lawn Mower Blade. This is the default melee weapon that every Berserker starts off with which cannot be sold off. The Lawn Mower Blade is extremely effective at clearing off waves 1 to 5 before any lethal threats arrive, such as the Squeak and the Flash Pounce. The strengths of the Lawn Mower Blade are simply that it has the fastest attack speed and that it can clear waves and waves of Zeds both effectively and swiftly. The weapon itself consists of a light attack, heavy attack, a melee bash attack and a block function. The light attack allows the Berserker to quickly clear waves of Zeds quickly together with the option of controlling the direction which the weapon swings in, while the heavy attack allows the Berserker to take off much more tanky Zeds such as the Siren and the Husk from waves 1 to 5. The melee bash however, is where the weapon shines as it lets out a shift, and allows you to unleash an extremely swift attack and also stuns the Zeds should you not be able to kill them. It is also very consistent in terms of where it hits, so if hits that adjust with your movement aren't your thing, then the melee bash should be perfect for you too. Next up, we have the Krovo Survival Tool. This weapon is also a default weapon a Berserker starts with. The Krovo is a quick and versatile melee weapon, capable of dealing both slashing and blunt damage. Its primary fire is a fast slash attack, and can be held for a combo attack. A secondary fire is a heavy blunt attack, while alternate fire gives a block and parry. A light swing will decapitate any basic Zeds, such as the Clocks, Cysts, Stalkers, and Gorefast. A light swing will not kill a crawler in one swing to the body as they have a 50% resistance to the slashing. However, the standard heavy attack not only does more than enough blunt damage to kill a crawler, it is also very good at catching them mid-leap. The Krovo is also better at taking down husks and sirens compared to the Lawn Mower Blade due to its naturally higher damage. Despite its favourable handling, the Krovo deals low damage and relaxes a reliable stun, and should be replaced with the Pulverizer by the time Scrakes spawn. Next up, we have the EMP Grenade. It is often underestimated and should not be taken lightly because of its use as a utility. In later stages of the game, notably waves 6 to 10, the EMP Grenade can be thrown by the Berserker to release a stun that negates all the abilities of every Z. It should, however, only be used on the larger Zs, such as the Squeak and the Flash Pound due to the threat they possess to the squad. When used on the Squeak, it can temporarily disrupt the Scrakes from sprinting, no matter the situation, whereby they have either already been reached or have yet to be touched by a squad. Its use as a utility can also be team friendly as it can be comboed with a Gunslinger or a Commando, by which the moment the Scrake is EMP'd, the Gunslinger or the Commando can unleash a flurry of bullets to its head and can then be decapped easily by the Commandos or Gunslingers. A Flash Pound, however, is far trickier than the Scrape simply because of its innate ability to rage without even being shot by the team. With the EMP Grenade, it is advisable to use it right as your team shoots it, simply to stop it from going into rage mode. When timed correctly, the EMP Grenade can easily prevent groups of Flash Pounds from raging at the same time, allowing you to pick a duel with a single Flash Pound without raging the others, protecting both your team and yourself. The EMP Grenade can thus be dubbed as a Situation Resetter, by which it allows you to reset the entire scenario from complete utter chaos into a more calm and relaxed battlefield. Next, we move on to the only tier 2 weapon, the Vlad 1000 nail gun. 
Although not regularly used by Berserkers of a higher skill level, the new gun is still effective in its own right and can be picked up by newer players as it can be used to prevent hordes of Zeds from being pushed up into the room the squad is holding. The primary fire of the nail gun shoots out nails in numerals of either 1 or 7, while the secondary fire allows you to aim down your iron sight. The alternate fire can be used to toggle between the single firing mode and the shotgun mode. In single fire mode, the nail gun can be used as a hit popper, allowing the berserker to pick off loads standing behind a large group of Zeds, or other smaller but lethal Zeds, such as the sirens and husks. In the shotgun mode, the nail gun will fire a cluster of 7 nails per shot. This gives the nail gun 6 rounds of shotgun shell. The nails fired have built-in penetration, being able to deal full damage to two Zeds and reduce damage on the third. This allows Berserkers to quickly clear crowds of weak enemies. The nail gun has very low accuracy, especially in shotgun mode, having a spread similar to the dull barrel shotgun. It is also not consistent, where the shots are often not evenly distributed, making it unpredictable and hard to connect. It should be noted that the nail gun can actually have the ability to incap all the lesser Zeds, preventing them from using their abilities. This gives the Berserker a means to provide some form of crowd control. The Zwei Hander was an extremely powerful weapon, but was hit by the nerf bat. Let's first have a look at its attacks. Its primary fire is a fast swing that does slashing damage and when held down, can perform a 3 swing combo attack. Its secondary fire is a slower but stronger swing that does slashing damage as well. Before the nerf, the Zwei Hander was able to kill a Squeak in 5 headshots as Smash gave hard hits an additional 100% damage increase. The melee bash, which is a forward thrust of the Zwei Hander, does piercing damage and was able to penetrate multiple Zeds, killing them all by spinning the mouse around during the attack animation. However, the Zwei Hander has been nerfed pretty badly as Smash now gives only a 25% damage increase and the melee bash can no longer penetrate the smaller Zeds to kill multiple at once due to the heat box decrease. This means that as of now, the Zwei Hander lacks the ability to clear trash Zeds quickly and does not have enough utility to justify using it for fighting large Zeds. As such, I would strongly suggest refraining from using this weapon. Since the nerf of the Zwei Hander, the Pulverizer has turned into the bread and butter weapon of the Berserker. Its primary fire is a fast swing that does bludgeon damage and when held down, can perform a 3 swing combo attack similar to the Zwei Hander. Its secondary fire is what makes the Pulverizer a unique weapon. It does explosive damage at an arc of 180 degrees from your view on contact with an enemy on top of the hard bludgeon attack that is inflicted, damaging enemies that are nearby and in front of you. As such, the secondary fire is an extremely powerful attack. However, the explosive shots are limited to the amount of ammo you have on the Pulverizer. Its melee bash can be used to knock down Squakes and Flash Pounds if you hit them on the head. Fighting Flash Pounds is where the Pulverizer really shines, as Flash Pounds are weak against explosive damage, making the Pulverizer's secondary fire very powerful against them. While going against a 6-man Hell on Earth Flash Pound, it takes 9 hits to take one down. One tip is when you run out of explosive shells and need to reload, always check that the Flash Pound is not raped. If it is, do a parry or block to get it out of rage and reload your weapon. This ensures that you do not take damage while reloading. Squeaks on the other hand, are resistant to explosive damage. As such, it is recommended that you do not reload the pulverizer after emptying your initial explosive shells and use your secondary fire to hit the squeak on the head, aiming for knockdowns. The explosive shells can be used to stun the squeaks. Parrying the squeak is actually quite easy and I suggest practicing your parrying against them as you only take 10% of the full damage plus you get to stun the squeak for a split second. Bear in mind that the pulverizer can carry a maximum of 35 explosive shells so use them sparingly unless absolutely necessary. Last but not least, we have the Eviscerator. The Eviscerator is a chainsaw with two functions, differentiated by its primary and alternate attacks. Its primary fire allows you to shoot out a bus saw that deals massive damage to the target. What is unique about this weapon is that you can recover the blades that you have shot. Its secondary fire turns the Eviscerator into a chainsaw, which is effective at clearing smaller Zeds. your 
However, due to his tendency to easily chew up a third of your fuel with your flash pound, he should be used sparingly. Furthermore, the disappearing ammo and off-center shot firing makes the Eviscerator a subpar weapon, outshining the Pulverizer only in terms of its rate of fire. It also is a lot less cost-efficient and ineffective as a weapon to clear out larger zeds, as oftentimes you will use up a majority of your ammo before the wave even ends. It is therefore not advisable to pick up the Eviscerator as a primary weapon of choice for the Berserker due to these drawbacks. It can however be picked up if there is a need to clear out smaller zeds, similar to the nail gun. Lastly, I'd like to end off the video with a simple tip when playing as the Berserker. Because the Berserker's weapons are relatively cheap and that the default weapons are extremely lethal against smaller Zeds, it is advisable that the Berserkers share their dosh with the rest of the squad members who need it before Wave 5 to pick out key weapons such as the Medic's Assault Rifle, the Demo's RPG, and etc. So this brings us to the end of my Killing Floor 2 Berserker Weapons Guide. Do check out part 1 of my guide where I do an introduction of the Berserker as well as explaining the skills that the Berserker has and which to pick. I have put a link in the description as well as an annotation here on the bottom right hand corner. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more guides and let's plays.